Hey everyone, welcome back to another Iron Man from Scratch video. Firstly, Happy New Year. I hope you all have an incredible 2024. I had a blast starting the Iron Man game mode last year, and the fact that so many of you enjoyed the videos was a huge added bonus that I never expected to happen, so thank you all very, very much for that. In the last episode, we chipped away at a few quests with the ultimate goal of completing Lunar Diplomacy. That gave us access to the fourth and final spellbook, which is a really nice milestone to have checked off the list. That's by no means the last big quest unlock though, so today, we're going to keep pushing our way forwards towards those handy old Barrows Gloves. The cash stack is getting a little bit low as well, so we're probably going to have to do something about that too. Let's get cracking. Given it's the new year, it's time for some goal setting. So what are your plans for your RuneScape account in 2024? Let me know in the comments below. I've got my sights set on maxing. It's a bit of a stretch goal given the limited time that I have, but it's always good to aim higher, so let's see where the year takes us. Now, as I said, the cash stack is getting a little low, so we're going to have to build it back up a bit. For now, I'm just going to stick to my trusty old Earth Battle Stars to make some GP. I've done a video before going into detail on the method, so I'm not going to bore you again with that. I'll put a link in the description and on the screen now. But there are a few little things that are a bit different to the first time we went through the journey. First of all, we have access to giant seaweed now, which we've been slowly growing on Fossil Island. We can throw that on a fire to get ourselves some soda ash, and it's a pretty easy way to build up the stack for an Iron Man account. In the past, we had to go buy it from the charter ships and run back and forth banking it bit by bit. This is a lot less tedious than that. Another little spin I put on the method was trying to do a little bit of multi-skilling with agility. In the past, our agility level was too low for Sears rooftop course, but now that we have access to it, it's one of the more chill courses. It has this nice little run back here where we can get a bit of glass blowing done. Obviously not the fastest way of doing the course, once you have the diary and you can teleport back, that's better from a pure agility point of view, but this was nice to get a little bit of multi-skilling done since we needed the glass blowing to do our money making regardless. On top of that, it was a good activity as well for raising the kitten to keep building that death rune stack. I believe another very popular way to multi-skill these days is to use the Piscorelius artifact thieving and you can do things like blowing glass there as well, but I just felt like doing a bit of agility myself, so that's what I stuck to. A handy little trick as well, when the run energy got depleted, just ring a dueling over to the Ferox Enclave, restore that run energy, bank if you need to, teleport back to Camelot, and off you go again. So throughout that whole process, I managed to rack up a few agility levels, 61, 62, and 63, as well as a sneaky little crafting level thrown in between. The third and final change, which is probably the biggest of all, was being able to craft air battle staffs once you get to 66 crafting. The air obelisk is in pretty much the same spot as the earth obelisk, just slightly deeper in the wilderness. Instead of going down to the south here where I'm standing, you go up this ladder instead, and you'll be at the air obelisk where you can set up your gravestone the same way as normal. Once you have access to the air obelisk, there's just no reason to do earth battle staffs anymore. You get better magic and crafting XP through air battle staffs instead. Hey, level 70 magic, very nice. That's another skill to our tally of base 70s working our way up in the world. To round it all out, I managed to get a couple more crafting levels, 67 and 68 throughout the process, which is very nice. And now we're wrapping up the last few high arcs to get our GP stack back to something a little bit more respectable. And where are we? Over 2 mil now, back to being a multi-millionaire. That feels good, much, be much better than the sub 500k we started at. And going through that whole process actually reminded me part of the reason we were so low on cash in the first place was because of the Kingdom of Miscellanea, which we unlocked a couple episodes back. So let's go actually collect the resources from that and see what it's got us. If you enjoy having a lot of cash to splash on RuneScape, then don't forget to drop a like on the video. It really helps me out and it's greatly appreciated. So apparently it's been like a month since I unlocked the Kingdom of Miscellanea. It does not feel that long. I have no idea where the time has been going recently, but that's what the dates on the video clips say. So they're not going to lie to me. It is what it is. I guess it is somewhat believable given I slacked off and let the favor drop down to 70%, which you should try to avoid doing. Try to keep it up above 90% if you can, but that's what mine's at and we'll see what we can get. Drum roll and oh, okay, that's very nice. We've got 3,400 mahogany logs. That'll last us for a long time. We're not going to have to worry about gathering any more for birdhouses. A few little rare eggs there that we can try to get some collection logs later in the future and a plenty of bird's nests as well for some seeds. So that'll be not too bad, quite handy. We're not going to put any more GP in now. The main thing we were after was the mahogany logs to keep our birdhouse run sustained for the foreseeable future. We'll save the GP for other things on the account for now, and we'll come back in the future once the account's a little bit more established and we have some spare GP that we can throw into here just for some bonus resources. I was curious to see what we would get from the seeds nest. Nothing super rare like a dragon fruit seed, but we'll take the U seed mahogany cow quite. Not too bad, still some decent stuff in there. And this is exactly what the mahogany logs were for, to keep those birdhouses ticking along. 62 Hunter, another level down. 
<laughs> you know what? There's one other thing we can do actually before we get into the questing. Because we did all those rooftop agility courses while doing the glass blowing, we've actually got a few marks of grace saved up. <laughs> Not enough for the full graceful outfit yet, but we can actually afford our pair of gloves. <laughs> and that's a collection log as well actually, I forgot about that, very nice. What's interesting though is for some reason the amount of weight reduction per each piece of equipment does not scale like to a similar amount of marks of grace. So like you get a better weight reduction per mark of grace for some pieces more so than others. <laughs> the top and the hood got scanned for some reason with a higher cost per kilo reduced. Right, it's about time we get into some questing I think and we'll sneak in a few diary tasks along the way as usual. Starting off with grabbing this sneaky little scorpion which we forgot to grab previously for scorpion catcher. Okay, first new quest of the day we're going to start up what lies below. Time for a bit of one small favor. It's generally one of the more annoying quests I know because you've got to run all over the place and do a bunch of little things. But it works out pretty well when you're multitasking and you can just chip away at each step of it while you're at this particular location doing a few other tasks and activities. It's definitely a good way to go about it rather than trying to knock it all out at once, especially if you're earlier in the game and don't have all the teleports unlocked. Gonna make a quick pit stop while we're here in Tallery for one small favor to get our first achievement diary task of the day. Opening up this chest with a crystal key. So we've knocked out a few once more favor steps and has taken us across the country all the way to Kandarin where we can hand in Scorpion Catcher for another quest point. From our Dwayne, we were able to quickly just catch the boat across the Remington so that we can light ourselves a bullseye lantern from scratch for another medium diary task. Oh, yuck. I completely forgot this was part of the Rat Catcher's quest. I hate this mansion. I don't know why. It just annoys me so much. I think it's because I'm too impatient and I keep getting caught by the guards upstairs in the house. <sighs> I hate everything. This stupid house. Okay, I finally got back into the last room in the downstairs area of the house. There's no more guards to dodge here. <laughs> Just don't pay too much attention to the chat logs and how many times I got caught. The next stop in our doing is starting up Cold War. And since Cold War kindly teleports up next to the Fremenic Hunter area, we can grab ourselves a snowy night for a medium Fremenic diary task. And we were meant to grab ourselves a hard task as well for catching a saber tooth kite, but I forgot to bring the logs and a knife. So if you're doing this, don't forget to bring those with you. Just making a quick pit stop in Varok to progress the next step of what lies below, and we'll do a quick banking trip while we're here as well for the next lot of quests. We are all geared up, ready for some Taibo One-Eyed Trio. There's a lot more jumping around the map these days than when I was multi-questing at the start of the account, now that I can actually teleport and run around a bit more easily and I don't just have to walk from stop to stop. There's a bunch of diary tasks we haven't done yet in the Brimhaven dungeon, starting with accessing the dungeon in the first place, chopping through some vines here. Another medium task for crossing over the stepping stones. And another medium one for going up the staircase to the second floor. While we're up here as well, we can kill a few fire giants to try and get the fire giant bone for Rag and Bone Man too. There we go, one fire giant bone for the collection. And then there should be another diary task for killing a bronze dragon, but I don't think I've quite come equipped for this one, so we're going to have to make a second trip, unfortunately. Okay, we just scraped through that time. There is a hard achievement diary task in the Karamja region for slaying a bronze dragon. Let's get back to the questing. Actually, there's another quick task we can do along the way, catching a Karumbwan for a medium diary task. I learnt my mistake from the Fremenic Hunter area. This time I got an axe so I can get some logs and I brought a knife so we can catch ourselves a horned Grack for another medium diary task. Once I get one more inventory slot, that is. Okay, there we go. Medium diary task complete. I should have done this task last time I was in Karamja doing Shiloh Village, but I completely forgot. Catching the boat here over to Khazard Port is another diary task. And throughout all of that, we've been slowly progressing Taibo One-Eyed Trio, and that is the quest complete. Up to 205 quest points now. Don't forget as well, once you finish this quest, to come down here and speak to the three brothers in the village. You'll get the XP and the skills and unlock a few other extra bonus rewards. Speaking of which, that got us the 55 attack and 63 strength. Very nice, some bonus levels. Another quick tip as well, if you're missing a bronze spear to make yourself some scarecrows, which are a couple of diary tasks in I think Falador and maybe Mauritania, you can grab yourself one of the poison spears here with a cleaning cloth and clean off the poison spear and get whatever one you need. There's actually only one more diary task we need to finish off the easy diaries, which is killing a yoga. Again, I could have done this while I was doing Shiloh Village, but I just completely forgot. But that'll be our last diary task, and that's the easy diary complete. Let's go grab that reward. Thank you very much, good sir, and we all know where this is going. Straight into Herblor, <laughs> although the Karamja diaries don't give you quite as much XP. I don't think it's an older-based reward, but we'll take what we can get. Remember those bronze spears I was just talking about, where we can finally set ourselves up a Scarecrow in Mauritania for an easy task, and then one more in Falador for a task there as well. <laughs> I'm not sure why that one's a medium and Mauritania is easy, but it is what it is. Okay, briefly back to the one small favor grind, speaking to the Tyndall Merchant for that step of the quest, and then speaking to the Silver Merchant in Ardoin for making history. Now it's time for a complete change of scenery. We're over to the desert and we're going to progress with the contact quest, speaking to Osman here. Teleport ourselves with the Camulet down to the temple, which is actually a diary task here as well. I completely forgot about that, but we'll take it. Do a lap of the agility pyramid for another diary task. That one was intentional. <laughs> I was expecting to get that one. 
And finishing our tour of the desert, we're back in Sophenham to wrap up the contact quest. Now I had memories of this boss battle being far harder than what it turned out to be, hence the massive inventory of food. But it turns out Ivan's staff just does what it does best and melted straight through the boss. Before we leave the area as well, we can quickly kill one of these locust riders with the Keras for another diary task. And that is the contact quest complete. I think we're going to keep putting any combat related XP rewards straight into attack until we get up to level 60 to unlock our dragon weapons. Okay then, now that's what I call good timing. I was actually about to pop into the pyramid here to grab some little pieces that we could give to Simon Templeton for a diary task. And it just so happened that our kitten grew up into a fully grown cat, which is perfect because we need to talk to the Sphinx here for a tale of two cats. Okay, that's that sorted back to getting the artifacts from the pyramid. And there is a diary task as well for opening the gold sarcophagus inside Pyramid Plunder. This should be our last stop in the desert for now, handing in some artifacts to Simon Templeton for another easy diary task. We actually got a lot more diary tasks done than I was expecting. I thought it was going to be more of a questing trip, but we'll take everything we can get. Just snag myself some ogre ribs for Rag and Bone Man too. Rightio, with that the airstrip is all repaired and we can begin the long trek back for one small favour, handing in all the items and requests that everyone asked for along the way. So I'm not going to bore you with every single delivery we need to make for one small favour, but there's a couple of tasks we can do along the way, so I'll be sure to highlight those. Starting with Big Chompy Bird Hunting, which is actually one of the last two quests that we need to do to wrap up all the RFD mini quests, alongside the Legends quest, which is still the other one to complete. <laughs> Let's get Big Chompy Bird Hunting done first, and we'll worry about Legends later on. That'll be Big Chompy Bird Hunting complete, a nice quick and easy one to get out of the way. One last stop for the Feldip Hills for now, catching ourselves a Spine Larupia for a medium Western Provinces task. Okay, actually we're going to take a bit of a detour from following the once more favour quest steps exactly. Whilst we were doing big chompy bird hunting, we were actually waiting for the potatoes to grow for a tale of two cats so we can wrap that up quickly. And then we'll knock out a couple of other quest steps before getting back to the once more favour train. It's going to be a bit of a flurry so let's smash it out rapid fire. Starting with a quick trip to the apothecary, I just spoke to him for a tale of two cats to grab the doctor's outfit and then we can also speak to him for rat catches to progress that quest at the same time. A quick little side show of cat v rat, you got this kitty. <laughs> Good job buddy, that's one mega rat dead. Then we've got to whip ourselves up a clockwork mechanism penguin suit for Cold War. Straight over to Keldegrim, again to knock out steps from a couple of quests in parallel, first the rat catchers part, and then a few steps of between a rock as well, getting the schematics and the gold helmet. <laughs> well, this is awkward. Okay, never mind. We're not doing the gold helmet for now. Just the first few steps of handing in the gold cannonball. We'll sort this out a bit later. Back to Berthop for a tale of two cats. And now we can start lining up a few extra steps alongside one small favor. Starting with the Tyndall Merchant in Port Kazar to hand him the comfy mattress. Up to a Dwayne to start off the last RFD prerequisite, which is the Legends quest. We can grab ourselves a few pieces of papyrus here as well. I think I may have some in the bank from before, but we'll grab them just in case. Slag Lith defeated for one small favor. And then we're quest hopping again over to Larry in the Ardoin Zoo to continue with a few steps of Cold War. Okay, we knocked out a couple of steps of Cold War, just going back and forth to Lumbridge Farm real quick, just up until the step called Intelligence on the wiki. And now we've wandered our way over from Ardoin to Sears Village to continue on with one small favor. Working our way towards White Wolf Mountain for one small favor, we can speak to Korvac below it for a between a rock and a hard place to grab the other schematic. And while we're up on the mountain, we can jump on the glider to get ourselves a medium Western Provinces diary task. Okay, one small favor has brought us all the way to Barbarian Village, and we're just going to whip up a second pot lid while we're here for Swan Song in the future. Quick visit over to the Chaos Altar via the Abyss to knock out a step of what lies below enchanting the wand, along with a bonus diary task for entering the Chaos Altar in the first place, which was technically planned, but I had forgot that I was going to get it. And with that, we were able to finish up what lies below 6,000 or 8,000 runecrafting XP. Sorry, we'll take that. 43 runecrafting oh, and 1,400 total. Very nice. That's actually really awesome, another 100 levels down on the account. It really does sneak up on you sometimes. Sort of a quest related thing, we just got ourselves a bunch of kudos cashed in from Historian Minas, and he got us an XP lamp as well, which of course is going straight on to Herbal. A cheeky step of Eagle's Peak completed, and then one final chat to Bob at the Varak West Anvils for the epic cutscene of his life story, and a tale of two cats complete. Two more quest points. Couple more steps of Cold War to knock out in Lumbridge, although making sure that we don't accidentally teleport ourselves over to the iceberg, that's not where we want to be right now. And then we're just going to start up the last few RFD subquests which we haven't begun yet. On our way over to Draenor, speak to Wizard Treyborn for the RFD Lumbridge Guide section of the quest. And then at Draenor, speaking to the wise old man for the Sir Amic Vars part of RFD. We are almost there for one small favour, but first we've got to kill ourselves a few seagulls to grab ourselves the bone for Rag and Bone Man too. And then speak to Felcrash in the Port Serim sewers for the Rat Catchers quest. Coming down here was a diary task as well. Oh, apparently I'd never taken this cart yet. I thought I had, but there we go. There's a medium task for the Karamja area. One final one to sneak in right at the end here. 
And after all of that, that is one small favor complete. One, one of the most infamously long and tedious quests in the game done. With a whole bunch of other stuff slipped in along the way. We're actually going to stick these pretty large XP lamps onto Slayer. We want to start building it up towards level, I think it's 58 for Cave Horrors. That way we can get our Black Mask straight away, rather than having to do any sort of training of Slayer without access to the Black Mask. We'll sort of be bouncing back and forth between Herblore and Slayer. There's plenty of XP lamps to go around, but yeah, ultimately the goal is to try to get Slayer up to around level 58 or so without actually actively training it too much. That way we're minimizing the training time spent without the actual damage boost from the Black Mask. All in all, a pretty productive video, I'd say. We got our cash stack back up to a more reasonable number, checked in our first resource collection of Throne of Miscellany, which had a lot of good stuff, and then smashed out a whole bunch of quests with a plenty of diary tasks sprinkled in along the way. We are very much within touching distance of those Barrows gloves now. But for today, we'll leave it there. So as always, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like. It really helps me out. And subscribe if you want to follow along the journey. Previous episodes on screen. And until next time, have a good one. See ya.